Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone. This is Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio, and it's a pleasure to to uh, be visiting with you again. I believe we're at episode 110. Holy moly. So uh, uh, last week we actually did kind of a, uh, a live show with... Uh, uh, Campanda, and that was kind of fun, and we're going to be doing more of that in the future. Uh, we do have an interview coming up in our next episode, and because of timing and everything, I have this show in between the two. So we're looking forward to that because uh, we'll try to do that at a pre recorded live kind of type show. I think we're going to try to bring uh, the folks in on Skype, and uh, so that way you can uh, see them at the same time. But We'll see. What um, the the problem is with interviewing folks that are on the road is often they don't have the best internet. So um, you know that's just how it goes. So um, I also uh, had the opportunity to have Derek on the show with us last week, and uh, uh, this week he's uh, scheduled for something else. So I'm kind of uh, we'll bring him in when we can. He's <laughs> he's got quite a schedule. Uh, he really, really enjoys doing the radio stuff, but he also has to make a living. So um, unlike some of the folks I make fun of out there that go out and uh, uh, do this RV thing, and you wonder how in the heck they make ends meet. However, I did come across some interesting information about some of the folks that are uh, uh, got YouTube channels out there. And, you know, actually uh, some of them that are, you know, got uh, good numbers to them, uh, they can average from a thousand to five thousand dollars a month uh, if their uh, channel's going good. So that would probably explain why you see so many of the videos that they pump out, whether good, bad, or indifferent. Um, their goal is to to keep that flow of uh, income from YouTube come in. So, and of course, with you know a little bit more greed and things like that, you know they may be selling T-shirts or um, writing books or making e-books or stickers and things like that and. Um, you know, uh, if they're going to sustain a lifestyle like that, they need money. So <laughs> that's how they do it. So, uh, you know, uh, it would be nice to, to be able to do that, but it gets old. I, uh, I found myself, well, Sherry and I both, w when we were full-timing on the road, it was kind of neat. But after a while, you just start saying to yourself, is, is this it? <laughs> it's like... I'm sitting in my RV, it's small, and I'm surrounded by people all the time really close, and I don't have as much privacy as I like, so eventually Sherry and I said, you know, this is fun, and it's neat to travel, all that stuff, but we needed to call, you know, someplace or have a base, and uh, uh, that's a good way to go. The, um, the other thing is uh, some friends of ours uh, that are uh, come and visit down here uh, every year, and uh, they bring their fifth wheel down from Montana, and uh, you know that gets old after a while. And and then uh, you know their RV is a little bit smaller than ours, so they, you know they feel kind of cramped. And and also with the when it starts warming up here, they either get forced to go home because their air conditioner can't handle the the heat. And so uh, this year they actually bought a park model. So uh, uh, it's just a single wide. It's not one of those ones with the Arizona room in it. And I believe uh, it was like a 1987. They got a pretty good deal on it. And they uh, got it for, I believe, around $10,000. And so, you know, that's a lot cheaper than buying an RV. So if you enjoy coming down to Arizona and looking for a, a, a practical way to do it, uh, you know, check into these park models. Now, of course, you got the park models, but a lot of times you have to pay rent on the place that it's at. That's not true everywhere. There's actually places down here where you can actually buy the the park model and the land. And uh, so, yeah, that's a kind of a neat deal. So anyway, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, that's the big news around here is Arizona is starting to warm up. Well, if you guys were listening to our show last week, you uh, would realize we did an interview with Kim Panda. 
And uh, I found that quite interesting. Uh, you know, it's definitely a great option for possibly uh, renting out your RV. But I'm still, you know, the more I put thought into it, the more it's like, I'm not sure if I really want somebody staying in our personal RV. However, you know, it's, I, I wouldn't have a problem with possibly buying a halfway decent uh, trailer, um, Class C, something uh, practical, maybe a 30, you know, if it was a motorhome, 28 to 32 feet, something like that, and with the intention of just renting it out. And then um, my expectations would be a little different. Uh, I think I just maintain it as a piece of property where it's an investment and I've got to constantly keep it up for rental purposes. And uh, I think I could live with that a little better than actually taking what, you know, because Sherry and I, our fifth wheel, we, we love it. When we get to it, it feels just like home. And, and it's, I'm not sure if I'd want someone with their kids running around, things can get broken. Uh, you you got to treat an RV a little different than a house. It can't be slamming doors and cupboards and, and, and uh, you know, it, taking care of the black tanks and things like that. You know someone else will not take care of it as good as you will yourself. So I'm really hesitant to, you know, <laughs> still want to do anything with my own fifth wheel. Um, I don't know. It's, But it does sound like a great idea to, um, you know, maybe get a hold of a good little RV of some sort. It could be a trailer, a fifth wheel, or a Class C, or a motorhome. And uh, rent that puppy out, and uh, you look sounds like you could, you know, uh, get it to pay for itself quite easily if uh, if it's a halfway decent unit and it's popular. Um, you know, um, <laughs> I'm sure that there's some dark there's a dark side to this thing, and I just don't know all of it yet. But I'm going to definitely research it, and uh, uh, and you know, using the uh, uh, Capanda is definitely. Uh, uh, a wonderful tool. I mean, it's just like being an Uber driver, you know, and you're not you're using your own car and you're using your own stuff. You just got the connections and plus they uh, uh, service you with the things you would need to do a rental like that, like uh, uh, insurance and things like that. And of course, they take about 20% of the income. So you got to keep that in mind. But for the services they offer you, it's it sounds like it's very much worth it. So I really enjoyed having the opportunity to do that interview. It definitely enlightened me. And uh, I hope, uh, if you haven't heard the interview, it's uh, episode 109. Uh, it's pretty good. I think it's uh, enlightening. I, I highly recommend that you uh, go to Camp Cam Panda, which is C-A-M, and the word panda, P-A-N-D-A dot com, and go, go to the facts page and, and read over whether you want to rent or when you want to be a renter, um, there's a lot to learn there. So uh, before I get going any farther, I do want to make sure that I give a little bit of a shout out to one of our supporters. So here we go. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. Yeah, I'm telling you, those guys are fantastic. Uh, they definitely got me out of a pickle when my refrigerator was acting up, and I didn't have to have it repaired, but they certainly gave me some great ideas of how to uh, troubleshoot it. And back when Sherry and I were full-timing and traveling, 
Uh, we had trouble with our refrigerator and uh, thanks to some of the training videos, ideas and things like that, what a, um, what a great service that is. And of course now you can uh, actually get certified in um, repairing RV refrigeration through one of their, uh, well, through their certif certificate course. And they also uh, support uh, the GI Bill too. And uh, so yeah, uh, what a great way to, if you're a hands-on kind of person and you want to make money on the road, uh, I certainly think that that would be an endless amount of work anywhere you go as far as RVing. Of course, the other thing that's out there is uh, you can also get uh, involved in RV inspection and there's uh, uh, courses for that too. And uh, what's kind of cool about that is they kind of help, while well, both companies help the people that get their certifications through, uh, through them, uh, will send, tr uh, send work to them based on where they're, you know, where they're at in the region. So yeah, um, <laughs> you can't go wrong there. So uh, it beats trying to do videos every day and trying to make your YouTube channel gigantic. <laughs> so you can go out and make some real dough. So anyway, uh, uh, I want to. Th yeah, I'm very grateful to uh, having uh, uh, Ford Refrigeration supporting us, and uh, I, of course, we're always uh, tickled pink that you guys are sp supporting us too, and the channel. Uh, and the podcast has been growing like crazy, and we appreciate that. So, yeah, uh, let's uh, move on. So, with you know the growth of the station and everything going uh, crazy and stuff, I want to remind you that you can also hear RV Talk Radio on our re regular uh, internet radio station, which is Good Talk Radio. And we actually, each episode we make now goes up to Good Talk Radio. And there's three times a day, I believe, that RV Talk Radio plays. So you can actually listen to older episodes and, of course, the newer ones that just come out. So uh, uh, that's constantly being updated. Anytime we make an episode, it goes straight up to Good Talk Radio, which uh, uh, if you've never uh, listened to Internet radio, now some people enjoy talk radio and other people enjoy music. Uh, we have both. We have Good Talk Radio and we have Good Music Radio. And I can assure you, you'll love either one of them. And what's really neat about them is you can turn your uh, your cell phone basically into a radio station. Um, one of the easiest ways is every radio station that is you know, not pirated, is running its normal stuff, has to be licensed. So we use what's called Live 365. So if you wanted to go easy on yourself, you just go to Google Play and download... Uh, Live 365 um, app, which is free, and download it. And then uh, all you have to do is to search for the radio station you're looking for, like Good Talk Radio, or Good Music Radio, and they, they show up and you just hit that as a favorite. And so you can go use a radio station anytime you want. As long as your uh, cell phone is getting connection, connection, then you're getting connection to us. So uh, there's times I'm sure you enjoy hearing the talk radio. Some people really enjoy that. And uh, other times you just want to hear really good music. And I can assure you, you'll like the music we have on good music radio. And uh, so, uh, you know, we expanded so much. We've got Arizona talk radio and good old radio. And so everything, everything uh, uh, to make it even easier, you can go to Cutting Edge Radio Network. And it actually shows all the radio stations we, uh, we have. And, uh, yeah, they keep us busy, and uh, that kind of helps make everything more practical and more uh, uh, sustainable to have it in a format like this. So uh, I do urge you, if you get the chance, to please go visit our radio stations. You can also, um, you know, the podcast, just uh, a real simple program you can get for free. It's called Podcast Addict, and uh, that's free. Just go to Google Play, type in Podcast Addict. And uh, I kind of like that one, kind of works really well. But once again, once you got it on there, you just go into the search section, make sure it's searching iTunes, and you can find all of our podcasts there. You know, we have Arizona Talk Radio, we have RV Talk Radio, of course, we have Good Old Radio. If you like vintage radio shows from the good old days, the 30s, 40s, and 50s, <laughs> um, uh, we have, we actually upload a new show once a week, if not more. Uh, so there's quite an inventory in there of some really good old shows like uh, The Lone Ranger or Gunsmoke and 
uh, half gun will travel, this on and on, Orson Welles just goes on and on. So yeah, you just, uh, um, all this stuff is free, absolutely free. So yeah, and the other thing, if you happen to know a person with a uh, product or service that's interested in advertising with us, uh, just like you know the Ford Refrigeration does, you know, give us a holler. If they're not RV oriented and they want to be even more expanded out, Obviously, we have the other channels where we got Arizona Talk Radio, and of course, the big channels of uh, of uh, good talk radio and good music radio. And I have a cat talking to me. Hmm. It must be time to like, hey, Dad, my dish is empty. <laughs> I better go check it out. So uh, one of the things I do want to bring up that I keep noticing on all the different radio channels is uh, oh, not radio uh, RV channels is. Uh, Every single one of them talk about internet, and so uh, you know it's, it's it's getting to a point. It's like uh, I think where does the RV folks out there ever get the idea that uh, how critical it is to have decent internet at your location? Uh, because even if you're not making videos or something like that, of course the people are making videos they're always upset about the internet connection. And then those that get the air cards and things like that, you're talking about some really good, it costs a lot of money for that stuff. So, uh, uh, you know, like the air card Sherry and I had, we were paying like 110 for it now, and it gave us like 30 gigs of uh, band, you know, of uh, data. And uh, it gets, just gets totally ridiculous about the cost. And so it's definitely not an economical thing to do if you have to have internet when you're traveling. But, uh, I mean, even nowadays, it's like at least you want to be able to browse the internet or uh, be able to play YouTube or play uh, uh, Netflix or something like that. Um, uh, you know, these, I just I find it so amazing how many RV parks are still not making that a priority. Of course, you know, there's cost involved, but, you know, obviously if we've got to have it, then you got to pass it along in our monthly rates. But, um, you know, um, I don't know what to say about that other than it's getting to be more and more an issue in almost every channel you listen to. Uh, all of them are always talking about good or bad internet or what they have to do to go upload a video or something like that. But uh, I'm not just even, you know, not everybody's making videos, but it still comes down to YouTube channels, what you want to watch maybe to fix something. A lot of people spend their evenings listening, uh, watching uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime, uh, and you need the bandwidth to be able to watch those shows. So anyway, uh, I really hope that RV parks continue to improve their internet uh, functionality and uh, realize that uh, that's kind of a, uh, a selling feature. Uh, on RV parks and if you don't have it uh, the word gets out and it affects your bottom line so RV parks if you're listening um, the Wi-Fi is uh, a high priority even if you have to bring it you know bring it in uh, you may have to pass it along to the to the people that stay at your RV park but uh, all in all they'll be happier campers So I, I still find it very amazing how many misconceptions there are about Arizona and uh, and in some facts too. So one of the interesting things is I always get questions about the critters down here. And uh, at least where we live, uh, very don't see critters very often. So however, this morning my wife found a <laughs> coyote in our front yard. So uh, if that's uh, any indication, uh, you know, kind of towards the edge of uh, Arizona, um, towards, you know, court, getting closer to the desert area. So, yeah, the, I mean, there's uh, the closer you get to the edges, the more you probably see critters. Uh, but uh, because of the golf courses and stuff like that, we have the um, coyotes kind of cruising through the neighborhoods, uh, kind of passing through the, uh, the golf course areas. So. Uh, you do want to be careful with your cat <laughs> or small dog. Um, it's been said that, I mean, uh, the coyotes uh, in some neighborhoods have literally come into people's yards and attack their dogs or their cats. Um, the If you're out, like, towards Fountain Hills and stuff, that's really getting close to the uh, desert or open range 
they've actually had trouble with uh, bobcats. So, uh, but the other critters everybody asks about is, of course, the rattlesnakes, um, the uh, uh, scorpions, and of course, cockroaches, things like that. Um, and termites is an issue you got to be kind of careful of too. I've seen none of those here. However, um, I actually wanted to see a rattlesnake, so I actually went out to uh, the Indian reservation out by um, uh, Fort McDowell and cruised some back roads and literally found one crossing this, you know, crossing a road, n not a busy road at all. And it was kind of great because I wanted to get a picture of one, but I was scared to death of snakes anyway. So it was a great opportunity. To, uh, he was crossing, taking his time, enjoying the warm uh uh, concrete and so we just kind of drove around stopped right in the middle of the road no traffic at all and it was a back road and got some great photography of one without having to get out of the car so i was really happy about that uh when i lived in chandler like seven or eight years ago uh we would see the cockroaches once in a while you know cruising along the uh, concrete uh, walls and stuff like that it really depends on the neighborhood like tempe I hear that they see a lot more scorpions. So yeah, it just kind of depends where you're at and the upkeep of the neighborhoods and stuff like that. But uh, my particular area, no scorpions. Uh, the biggest thing that's really frustrating here is the little sugar ants. They're small, really teeny little ants. And uh, so it's a constant battle when they show up. Um, if we put down just a little bit of this kind of crystallite type stuff, uh, they disappear the next day, but uh, they can be quite irritating. And if they ever get into your house, <laughs> that's a pain in the neck. They're really hard to get rid of. Um, and they're really a pain in the neck on RVs. Uh, those little sugar ants, if they discover a way into your RV, and if they have something that looks good or yummy to them, they will invade you. <laughs> something fierce. I did once over in um, uh, Fort McDowell, have what's called a, a jumping spider. Um, they're about a, a size of a old oh, uh, silver dollar. Get into our RV. Don't know how he got in there, but uh, they're not poisonous or anything, but they're pretty big. <laughs> and it was a little bit weird catching him because, you know, once I grabbed him in a paper towel, I was like, okay, there's a hunk of meat in here. Uh, it was a serious uh, spider, but uh out at fort mcdowell i've also heard people seeing the tarantulas uh moving th around during what they call mating season uh they're harmless they're just kind of cruising around they want nothing to do with you but uh as far as in the household areas and stuff uh um you know unless you're on the edges of the desert you might see some of those critters but uh, uh you know and and you know, every, every, every area's got some kind of uh, irritating thing. I think another thing they have in Arizona you got to be careful of, especially if you're hiking or something like that, is uh, bee swarms, um, where literally a, a, a queen bee will relocate to another location and all the bees follow, and you don't want to be in the way because <laughs> they are kind of cranky. And so there's been uh, weird once in a while uh, where people have been hurt stung several several times because of what they call bee swarms or going from one point to another and uh while they're doing that you know they're following uh it'll be in a big batch and they'll hit a tree and this you know be a big blob of them stuff until they find a new location i guess that's kind of how it works but uh so yeah you, you want to kind of look out for that too especially if you're like hiking camelback mountain or stuff like that or, the, you know, or these, some of these trails we have. Lots of places go hiking. So, yeah, the critters are here, but um, you almost have to go look for them. You almost have to go find them. But in some cases, um, yeah. Uh, now, there was a report on the uh, news the other day that in some towns, we haven't heard it or anything around here, where they uh, have trouble with rats. And they're actually getting into the sewer system and actually can go from house to house to house <laughs> just through the sewer system. I mean, I mean, literally up through your toilet if they had to. So, uh, yeah, um, but, you know, these are the same kind of critters you'd see in other states, too. Uh, just you got to keep up your yard, 
Don't leave things uh, laying in the yard. Like uh, we do have black widow spiders. If uh, I had those in Central Oregon too, but uh, you know you can almost guarantee where you see them would be a dark and uh, moisture kind of area is ideal for them. They love that kind of area. So if you created something like that in your yard, most likely uh, you might find one there. So once again, they're harmless. Uh, well, they're not harmless, but uh, uh, if you just don't create the conditions for them to live, it, they won't show up. So uh, um, now for happy little uh, critters around here, we see uh, I get little baby cottontails. Uh, Sherry feeds them every night with carrots. Uh, we get what's called the love birds. I probably told you about that. They're kind of the birds that got released from a, uh, they're actually a canary. They're native to actually uh, uh, Africa. Anyway, so they got loose here and they, uh, they're only in certain areas of uh, Phoenix, which happened to be our area um, in Mesa. And uh, yeah, they're a really cool looking bird, but they look like little canaries or almost like a parrot. Um, and they're thriving here, and they actually live in the holes that are in the uh, Sororo cactuses. And uh, let's see, uh, lots of kinds, all kinds of birds, um, lots of hummingbirds, uh, but yeah. Um, and, you know, we've got tons of flowers, and so that keeps the bees busy, and uh, lots, lots, you know, it's, it's amazing how much life there is in the desert. So, uh, yeah, I just I kind of discussed yeah, I, 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 my notes because we um, on Outdoor Travel Channel, we actually make videos of living in Arizona. And I swear every video we do, we always get questions about the critters. And uh, uh, they're not as bad as you think. And uh, uh, really, you have control of the situation. Um, if you want those kind of critters in your yard, they'll show up. <laughs> they love an invite. But yeah, just uh, food for thought uh, if you come down here. If you're staying in the RV parks in the outskirts of Phoenix and uh, Arizona cities, uh, you're going to see critters. But uh, the more inland you get, uh, you know, you, some stuff will show up. But once again, you just do some preventative measures and you won't have any problems. So there you go. Well, I want to thank everybody that's been sending me notes and stuff and uh, uh, without saying names or anything like that. But, you know, I, uh, I've gotten a lot of stuff on millennials lately, and so it's just driving me crazy. So uh, one of the things that was sent to me was millennials blaming baby boomers for uh, their reasons for not wanting to buy cars and, and have mortgages and stuff like that is because baby boomers created an atmosphere that uh, uh, of debt and uh, so uh, it's it's the baby boomers fault and I <laughs> it's like I don't recall really blaming anything on my mom and dad uh, when certain things in the economy I didn't like but um, I don't know it's is it really <laughs> seriously is it really like that out there are the millennials really like this? Like, for example, cry rooms. So now, many colleges, I guess Google's already got one, there's now cry rooms for people to go into and cry. Um, my first question would be, if I was a business owner, is do they cry on their own time or do they, you know, or are they, are they crying on my time or I'm paying them? And I know it sounds heartless, but if you owned a business, you would be asking the same question. Um, is it really so bad that uh, exams are so um, uh, stressful now that we need cry rooms and then uh, safe spaces? It's like, okay. Um, I guess that would explain some of these people that live in vans and do e baggings and, and stuff like that at their RVs, their safe space. Uh, maybe that's it. I'm just trying to figure it all out. So I don't know. It's just, um, I could swear that things are just getting a little more berserk out there. Um, just like, uh, you know, labeling and stuff like that. I mean, even us in the RV industry are doing it, you know, uh, and, uh, I find myself talking about the different labels out there and uh, 
you know, really when it comes down to it, we try to generalize everything as this is RVing and this is RV lifestyle. And uh, uh, although they're all different, um, we just try to point them all out. So uh, I think the biggest thing I've been coming across lately is a little bit more uh, practical kind of RVing people I've met. Uh, typically they're now, um, you know, already have a home or something like that. Some people um, will go traveling for a year or two and then say that's enough and then go back to their homes just to say that they had the chance to do it in their lifetime. And then I'm find, seeing others that are looking at their RVs as like a, a, um, a vacation home, kind of like what me and Sherry do, where they'll put their RV uh, in a location and leave it there and then go use it in that location where it's already set up. And then the last thing I've been seeing a lot lately is, is people buying park models. And um, uh, that's not a bad way to go, especially if you're like trying to get out of cold regions and trying to get down here like Arizona. Um, having one of those park models already set up, they do have a few more benefits of being more homey than say an RV. And uh, I think have a little bit more longevity to them. But uh, yeah, so it's, so many different lifestyles out there, but I sure hope they're not using their RVs for <laughs> cry rooms or safe spaces. <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know, I, I remember trying to go through life trying to become tougher and stronger. And there's lots of times where my wife expected me to be the strong one where she couldn't, you know, like I remember her daughter coming home once and hit her head and bleeding all over my wife would turn purple it's like uh, okay that was no time for me to cry and it sure was no time for me to go run in a safe space it was take care of my daughter and get everybody under control and the, <laughs> the wife calmed down and I guess I had to be a little manly but uh, can't really do that in the Boy Scouts anymore either can we <laughs> so I'm confused if, if girls want to join the Boy Scouts then why is there Girl Scouts? I, I, I'm confused. Um, maybe they need to man up the Girl Scouts and leave the Boy Scouts alone and just let Boy Scouts be Boy Scouts. It's like, come on, this is just getting way out of hand. But, I don't know, that's just my opinion, but I think that, I think things are getting a little goofy out there, don't you think, guys? Well, good old summer showing up here pretty quick, and uh, you know what that means. Break out the old RVs and uh, check her out. So yeah, make sure, uh, you know, before you get going, check your batteries out. Make sure they have water. You know, just do some general kind of things. Uh, uh, you know, just check for water leaks and all those kind of things that you should be doing. Just get off to a good start. But the other thing that's, you know, uh, becoming a real problem out there is, is uh, you know, RVing is getting more popular and more popular. And so it's getting to a point you need to start thinking way ahead of where you want to stay. So, uh, yeah, being spontaneous just doesn't cut it anymore, especially if you're going towards the coast. Like if you're in Washington, Oregon, California, and um, even if you got a thousand trails uh, membership or any of those things, you need to call sometimes months in advance to uh, get in a spot. So if you can, especially you weekend warriors, uh, and you have plans for July and August stuff, you better get on the phone now. You may be too late now, but uh, it's time to start. Unfortunately, it's just getting more crowded and more populated, and I don't see a whole lot of new RV parks uh, changing. Um, I did notice up uh, in Anacortes, they changed their policy on RVs now where you can uh, uh, stay longer and stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, casinos are not not a bad spot to actually uh, think about, unless you go and play every day. But um, casinos are great because, you know, a lot of them usually have really good restaurants and stuff. But, um, you know, uh, so if your regular camping places are not available uh there's you know check the casinos out sometimes they got rv parking and uh, a lot of those are close to uh, some of the places you like to go in the like uh um 
over in uh, Oregon, I think there's a couple of uh, casinos that have some really great RV parks. Uh, Seven Feathers is a good one. But if you want to get closer to the beach, obviously you want to go to some of the other ones. But, yeah, I mean, it's an alternative because, um, I don't know, it's just, unfortunately, I mean, the good and bad is good as, you know, the RV industry is booming. bad thing is, uh, you know, it's hard, harder and longer to get your RV serviced and definitely harder to get into RV parks. That's the downside, but... Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's uh, I kind of hate that. Just, you know, I'm from the days of when I lived in Washington. We could just pack up the car and go to the beach and find a campsite. Uh, first come, first serve. Those days are long, long gone. So yeah, start planning ahead. Check your RV up. Maybe get it serviced uh, or do some of your own servicing. Check the oil. If it's a motorhome, check your oils and check your batteries and all those common things make sure your tires are good get off to a good start before you start heading out uh, it's nothing worse than getting into the season and something stupid happens to your rv and spoils the whole trip so yeah um of course if you haven't been in your rv for a while you want better make sure no one's moved into it the other thing that's really important i uh, found is uh um for those that have refrigerators if you didn't cover up your ducks or your uh, or your uh, breathing areas, uh, you know, you better check in there, make sure no uh, squirrel or mouse got in there and made a nest or anything like that. Um, that's the first source of a good fire. But, uh, you know, just open them up, get a flashlight, look up in there. Um, if you think something's got in there, maybe just take one of those yard blowers and blow it out and see if, you know, make sure they didn't make a nest or anything. Because you do, if you're using... Um, an RV refrigerator, you know, they either work by electric or they can work by propane. So there is fire back there. So that's a disaster waiting to happen. So if you haven't inspected your vents before you go on any trips, it might be a good idea. I mean, it, it's a pain in the neck, but it will be a worse thing to cause a fire in there. And RVs just don't do well in fire. That's all there is to it. And, uh, you know, having good tires and stuff... Uh, it it's definitely if you haven't if you're using original tires from an rv that's been around a while um you could really spoil your trip <laughs> i've had tires blow before and i don't do the tires disintegrate they damage the rv when they come apart so it's not not fun not fun at all so guys if you're getting ready to hit the road and this is the season for you of course you know the season's kind of like almost over here in arizona it's getting too hot but um, uh, I tell you one thing, if you brought an RV down here to Arizona starting in May, uh, you'll have no problem getting an RV space. Uh, the only problem you may have is trying to keep your RV cool. Um, and by the way, when I was down here, when we lived here in the summer in our RV, uh, you know, I have two air conditioners in my fifth wheel. I literally brought in a third one, a portable and piped it out the window, and I liked it because it worked off a of 110. So uh, um, it's uh, what I liked about it is if you know once in a while we'd have brownouts and stuff, I could run that air conditioner on my generator if I had to. So uh, or if, uh, and, and of course I had a pet in the RV, and it's like oh my gosh, if one of my air conditioners went out, you know, that killed my cat or dog. So having that third air conditioner really helped and uh, help uh, keep the wear and tear down on my major uh, AC units on the roof. And so uh, if you come down here, um, you know, you might want to have a portable um, air conditioner and you'll have to pipe it out one of your windows. And uh, it's worth it, but I mean, you can come down here and enjoy Arizona and never have to fight for a space because everybody's gone home because the snowbirds... Uh, go home and we have lots of rv parks down here now if you go into a place like cottonwood or anything up by the sedona area that's a different story it's it's um it's you could wait a month or two before you could get in there and i think one of them's a thousand trails and uh, there's a two or three month wait in some of those places they're very popular and and it's cooler up there so that's not the same scenario as we have here in 
Arizona. But yep, season's here. Time to prepare. Do a little bit of uh, pre-screening and check check your RV. Make sure it's safe and ready to hit the road. Um, check your uh, air pressure and your tires. All those kind of things. And it's like I know it's a pain and it's hard, but it's better to do it now. And if you have a generator, check the oil in the generator and all those kind of things, and, and you'll have a much better season. I, I promise you. So uh, I was uh, watching a video uh, just today, actually, and it was done by Herbert's Travels, I believe. And he was doing some skits about all oh, some rude and things uh, that really irritate people. And, and there was some good stuff, but I want to go back and kind of remember a few things that was irritating to a weekend warrior coming across people that were full-timers. <laughs> and these are things that happened to me, actually. So it's so funny. It's like, you know, once again, we all you know watch these videos and you see a full-timer's perspective on things. Well, this time, let's take a weekend warrior and have a look at what it's like to be next to someone who's a full-timer. Now, this one's happened to me several times, but sometimes full-timers in certain RV parks act like they're the RV police. <laughs> and, and they'll come up and act like they run the place and all that stuff. And sometimes, like, uh, uh, I remember one time I was in a in lot. It was wooded. And I had a cinder in the grass in my area without a leash on. And uh, uh, out of the blue, a guy comes walking up to me and says, you know, you need to have a leash on that, on that dog and I said I do have a do leash on this dog and and I explained what it was and it was an electronic leash and I was training her to stay within a 10 foot radius of us and she and if she did she got zapped and the guy goes well that's not good enough and I said okay <laughs> I tell you what let's put the I'll put send her on a leash and I call her and let's put this let's put this around your neck and let me see how thrilled you are to leave the grass <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I mean, Cinder was on a I think so. It was an example of somebody assuming he knew what was going on, and uh, decided to be a policeman to someone who was, in a sense, just a weekend warrior at the time, and uh, it backfired on him. And uh, I've, I've come across that a couple of times back in the days where I used to go up to Squim, and I used to take our boat up there, and we kept our RV. Uh, up for a uh, uh, fishing season and there was an old guy that was just terrorizing the heck out of us because I think I parked funny or something and it was you know just for the weekend and uh, because I had a really big truck and it stuck out a little bit or something and he was just oh my god it was something like you know if you have an uh, issue go to the RV manager and, uh, and uh, they were quite aware of my situation, knew that we were just there for the weekends and we went home. This guy was there full time. And in, I, I even went to the office and said, I'm getting a complaint against this. And they said, oh, yeah, that's Bob or something. And uh, we've been he, he gets a little hostile with people. And it's like, you know, I'm just here for the weekend. I really don't want to put up with a, someone like that. And uh, But uh, another one that really bothers me is... Uh, the ones that have uh, well, RVers with fences around their RV with like multiple dogs, yappy dogs. And it's like, are you kidding me? It's like, you know, I appreciate people that take care of dogs and get shelter dogs and all that stuff. But when you walk by someone's place, minding your own business or walking your dog by them and you have like five yapping little dogs going nuts and it's like all you can think of is like, I want to walk faster. <laughs> and it's like, are they living there full time where it's their, you know, they, it's their house or something, or is it an RV park for people to go for recreation? And it's like, you know, one, two dogs under control, don't have, you know, should be on leashes anyway, not little fences. And I, most RV parks don't even like those anyway. Um, I mean, for God's sakes, well, we. Where does it stop? It just gets out of control. These full timers, a lot of times, they get kind of uh, feel like they hold possession in that RV park, and it can actually 
make up some of their own rules and it's ridiculous. Another thing I've noticed with uh, full timers that have been in uh, like an area for a long period of time, and I'm talking maybe even you know more than just a snowbird, that they look like you know they say you know most of us are kind of minimalist anyway, but you go to one of their sites and it looks like they brought their whole house with them. There's like boxes and top um, and boxes and boxes of stuff under their RV, stuff in the back. These things that are some of them bring full-blown lawn uh, furniture uh, the whole works and you go why are you even here if you're bringing your house with you <laughs> it's like totally ridiculous and um i think the other thing gets really frustrating is like uh it seems like every rv park's gotta have some guy with a harley that is louder than the dickens which is okay until they open, you know, fire it up at 6 o'clock in the morning when you're still asleep. Uh, it gets a little irritating. Or very late at night coming back. And then they, you know, they don't just kind of putter in it. They got to rev it a few times before they shut it off at, you know, uh, 1 o'clock at night. And it's like, seriously? Um, <laughs> I don't know why some of those RVers that are there for long periods of time get this feeling like it's my place it's my property and it's like new no. <laughs> it's not it's you're you're renting it just like i am and uh um oh my god and and it seems like the full timers are the ones that bend the laws all the time whether it's too many dogs fences around their places too much junk or uh building fires when they shouldn't be and uh you know <laughs> A lot of people, you know, they'll have a little fire things and they'll go with the propane and you can do that in some places, but a lot of them will still use wood and it's still against the law and it still can cause a fire. Do you really, really have to have a fire that bad for God's sakes? And then uh, yeah, another time I was at, uh, I think it was the Eagle View over by Fort McDowell. You know, you meet people all the time, and you kind of tell them what's going on, and you talk about things. And I think I mentioned to some lady, I had no idea who she was, running around with some dog, telling um, and asking about, you know, how we got there and all that, and just like we asked them to and stuff. And we mentioned, yeah, we uh, we bought a house, and we'll be closing it here in a month and month and a half or so. And so we're kind of excited, and but you know, we've been at that one RV park for over a year. Anyway, so, but I didn't tell the office because I didn't want to cause any issues with the lease and all that kind of stuff. So I kept it to myself. Well, finally, a month and a half later, when we got close to getting ready to uh, check out, sh the lady said she already knew that we bought a house and we were getting ready to um, leave our space because uh, four to five people asked for our space in advance as soon as we moved out and it's like oh my god <laughs> so apparently full-timers or people with long times of stays are really good gossipers too <laughs> i mean i really i've analyzed that over and over and i believe i've only i only told like one little gal with a dog that was maybe a few spaces down didn't even really make a big deal about it just saying that yeah eventually we'll be uh, heading out because we you know we you know we bought our house and we're gonna uh, be moving pretty soon and oh my god i miss it she must have told like 20 people uh <laughs> so you know um the videos i keep seeing is like i watched on herbert's travels he was doing a list on things that irritate you know, or etiquette basically and, and they're true etiquettes and one of them was uh walking through other people's sites oh my god i saw that i've seen that so many times the only way that i'd walk through someone else's site is if i they were there and i asked for their permission um, otherwise i i can walk around um not put, picking up after your pets oh my i don't know why people to this day don't realize if you're going to own a pet, you need to be responsible for them. Um, leaving garbage around your RV place. And, and, you know, like down here in Arizona, we constantly get these little wind gusts and things like that. So sure enough, you come in next morning, it's like, you got garbage in your RV space. And it's like, where did this come from? 
and it's because people just lay things around and, and they're not being responsible. Um, and, and, you know, I heard about the fires and there's people that always push the buttons on or push the limits on whether they can build fires, propane or not, or, you know, using real wood. Uh, <laughs> I've never had this happen, but um, Herbert's Travel says a friend of his had it happen where someone was used their stuff. Like, I, I can't, I mean, I've never seen that happen before, but I guess he was saying someone in a laundromat took somebody else's soap because they didn't have any and needed some to do their laundry without asking. And it's like, okay. <laughs> I believe it's true because people are nuts. Um, using, um, keeping your dog on a leash. Now, a lot of people you know, will say, well, I have a dog that stays under control. And his point was, um, it's, that's great. You may have a great dog and all that stuff, but some people keep their dogs on a leash because they're not trustworthy. And if your dog's lottie dying around and now runs up to a dog that isn't under control, it doesn't like to be approached, your dog could seriously get hurt, not to mention the person that's holding that leash. You could be setting yourself up for a great lawsuit. And, and there's nothing more irritating than someone's pet running in the middle of your uh, of your you know little space you do have in your RV park, especially you know especially when you're cooking or something. It's like people use leashes. Um, there is places you can go where you don't need leashes, um, but in an RV park, always keep your pet on a leash. And uh, and no, I don't I don't buy into the little fences that you guys have in the front of your RV uh, RVs. It's distasteful. It's it's not appropriate. And if you need to run a dog zoo or a shelter, go buy a house and have property where you could do it appropriately, but not in an RV park. And then the last thing I think you were showing up is people playing loud music. And, and it can be any age. I had the guy who was like 70, 75, um, all by himself, playing his music incredibly loud. Luckily, he kind of stopped doing it by dinner, by late evening. Um, but it was still like, really? I, th I could swear I'm next, <laughs> next door to some teenagers or something. And it's like, re it was... <laughs> but, you know... It, I don't know, but yeah, people are amazing sometimes. But anyway, enough on that. Um, oh, uh, I, I just I wanted to talk about etiquette a little bit, but it's a two-way street. It's not just the full timers, uh, and it's not just the you know, weekend warriors that might be you know partying and making noise. It's a lot of times it can be uh, the full timers get kind of stuck in their ways. And uh, it goes two ways, but etiquette, whether you're a weekend warrior or you're a full-timer or semi-part-time or snowbird, please be aware of what you're doing to other people because you are in an RV park and you are parked close to each other. Well, guys, we're getting to the end of the show, and I want to appreciate you for uh, listening to RV Talk Radio. I want to remind you, you can listen to our podcast from RV Talk Radio or... You can catch our show uh, played uh, two to three times a day, uh, different episodes, of course, uh, on Good Talk Radio. That's goodtalkradio.com. And uh, remember, we, we, have, uh, we have this in the podcast format, and you can play, pull it up on, you know, we're listed everywhere. And uh, uh, don't forget, you can also get the YouTube version of this. Uh, no matter what you do, we appreciate if you'd share our shows and tell people about us. And please uh, leave comments, good, bad, or indifferent. Just be professional. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate that. Uh, next week, we're trying to get a, a Dan and Jen Nevada is the name of their channel. Um, and, uh, in fact, I just talked to them today. Very, they're excited to do the show. We're excited to have them. We we're going to try to do Skype, but I think it's going to end up being a phone interview just because of technicalities of the uh, internet connection that they have at their location, but we're very excited to have them uh, on our next show. So in uh, episode, I believe, uh, <laughs> 110 or 111, I think it's going to be. What's this one? This is 110. So one, uh, 111 is where we're going to interview those two, and we're really looking forward to it. They seem like really nice people. And, uh, yeah, and I'm sure we, uh, we'll learn a lot from them. So until then, I want to wish everybody uh, uh, safe travels out there. I want to, I, 
I'm so grateful for the great uh, feedback and the growth of our channel and the growth of our of this show and the whole works. And it was really fun to do Cam Campanda last week. That was a great show. And anyway, yeah. So if you got a product or service and you're interested in being interviewed or like to advertise on our show, let us know. We'd we'd love to have you. So um, once again, I'm Rob Scribner. Thanks for listening to RV Talk Radio, and we'll talk to you next week. Be safe. Bye now. Hey, thanks for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to subscribe, like, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. We'd really appreciate it. See you next time. Bye.